In this video, I'm going to prove that the normalization of a wave function is preserved with time. This video is part of a playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find the link to the playlist in the description below. So let's go ahead and prove that normalization is preserved. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by rewriting an expression uh, for the partial time derivative of the probability density. Now we've actually looked at this in a previous video, and there's a previous video dedicated to this derivation, but I'm just going to go over some of the key points. I'm going to skim over the details. You can go and watch that video if you want to see all the details in the derivation. Another thing, uh, in this entire derivation, I'm going to try and keep psi star on the left and psi on the right, just so it's easy to see where the psi stars are and where the psi is. And so psi star is just the complex conjugate of the wave function. So let's go ahead and start off with the partial time derivative of the square amplitude of the wave function. So what is this equivalent to? This guy is actually just the partial time derivative of psi star times psi. So that's the complex conjugate of the wave function times the wave function. That gives us the square amplitude of the wave function. That's how we turn the wave function into a probability density function. And we're trying to find the partial time derivative. So we have a product over here. So we can actually use the product rule for differentiation. Let's go ahead and expand this out using the product rule. Uh, keeping the uh, psi star term on the left, I'll expand it out this way. We'll go psi star times the partial time derivative of psi. And the swapped over derivative term will have the derivative applied to psi star. And then we'll have psi. So what can we do with this? We can actually rewrite these guys using the Schrodinger equation. Right? The left-hand side of the Schrodinger equation has got i h-bar times this guy. And then uh, we can just divide both sides of the Schrodinger equation by i h-bar. And that's going to give us an expression for the partial time derivative of the wave function. And if we want to find this term with the complex conjugate, we just have to take the complex conjugate of both sides of the equation. And we do that in a previous video. And what happens is that there's a term with the potential, v psi. And that actually gets canceled out, because there's a term with the potential that has a plus sign, uh, and a term that has a minus sign. And those guys actually cancel each other out. So all that's left is a term that's analogous to a kinetic energy term. So it has some constants out the front, and it's got a bunch of uh, second order partial derivatives with respect to position. So let's go ahead and write what this would become if we substituted uh, the modified versions of Schrodinger's equation into here. So what we would actually get is i h bar over 2m. That's the constants out the front. And you can see this is actually coming from that uh, kinetic energy term. Because in the kinetic energy term of the Schrodinger equation, we have minus h bar squared over 2m. And here, we've, we've got an i uh, that we've got from dividing both sides by i h bar. And we've also lost one of the powers of h-bar, because it's no longer h-bar squared. We've had to divide by that h-bar. So that explains this constant. That's where this constant is coming from. So now what we can do is we can uh, have the other terms. And these terms are going to have a psi star. And they're also going to have a second order derivative over here, like this. And then we're actually going to have a minus sign. And this minus sign actually comes from the complex conjugate. Right, because we're taking the complex conjugate, that turns an i into a minus i. So that's going to give us an analogous term. And it's going to have a psi star over here. And we'll have psi just here. So this guy is actually what we get. Uh, we can further modify this. And we can actually pull out a partial derivative with respect to x. And I'll do that over here. Oop, I'll do that. And we'll have the partial derivative with respect to x of, I'll go on to the right hand side so you guys can see what I'm writing. Uh, what, what we want to do is we want to keep this constant over here. So we'll have i h bar over 2m. And we also want to keep psi star. But now we've actually taken this partial derivative out. We're going to have the psi dx. And we'll subtract off the psi star dx. 
and we'll have a psi. And I'll close the bracket. Why are we allowed to do this? Normally, you can't just pull out derivatives if there's some kind of mixed term over here like this. But what we actually did in a previous video is we added a, a sneaky little term uh, and added and subtracted it. And then we used the product rule for differentiation in reverse. And it actually got us this. So this is a valid step. You can actually go from here to here. You can pull out this derivative because you have to uh, do the product rule in reverse. So we've actually used the product rule again. We use the product rule to get this from here, and then we use the product rule in reverse to repackage all of this stuff from the left-hand side. So uh, this is actually what I wanted. This is the expression that we need to prove that normalization is preserved. So what did we do to get it? We started off with a definition over here. We used the product rule for differentiation. Then we substituted uh, a rearranged version of the Schrodinger equation and also a complex conjugated version of that. Uh, then we canceled some terms. We canceled some terms involving the potential. And we just uh, we were left with these terms that came from the kinetic energy term in the Schrodinger equation. That explains uh, these second order partial uh, derivatives with respect to the position coordinate, so x. And we also explained this constant over here, this i h bar over 2m. That just comes from the kinetic energy uh, constant out the front, the uh, minus h bar squared over 2m. And we pulled out this derivative using the product rule for differentiation in reverse. So you can actually you can write out uh, the full product rule for this, and you will actually get this because some terms will cancel. So now we have this guy is equivalent to this guy. Let's go ahead and uh, do the most important part of this video, which is to prove that normalization is preserved. So let's go ahead and start off by thinking of the time derivative of the area under a probability density curve. What is that going to look like? Well, we're going to have d dt. That's our time derivative. Uh, and then what we're going to have is the integral from uh, minus infinity to plus infinity of this guy, the uh, probability amplitude squared. That's the probability density function. So this guy, uh, we know, is going to be equal to 1 at t equals 0. But how do we know it's going to continue to be equal to uh, 1 at t equals t prime, or any t? Well, what we need to do is we need to uh, rewrite this in a slightly different way. What we can do is we can move this derivative inside, and then what we're going to get is the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of the partial derivative with respect to time of psi, uh, the, am the amplitude of psi, squared. So this is actually what we have up here. Now I'll write a dx. So we know that this guy is the same as this guy. But we also know that this guy is actually equivalent to all of this. And have a look at this guy. It has a partial derivative with respect to position. And this guy has an integral with respect to position. So we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus and we can actually get rid of this derivative, and we can get rid of this integral. The integral and the derivative, they cancel each other out. So all we have to do is evaluate from minus infinity to plus infinity. We have to evaluate this expression on the inside from those bounds. So from minus infinity to plus infinity. So let's have a, have a look at that. and We can set that equal to i h bar over 2m. And we're going to evaluate this guy. We're going to have psi star d psi dx minus partial derivative of this guy dx times psi. And we have to evaluate that from minus infinity to plus infinity. So those are our bounds. But you might be thinking, uh, isn't this a little suspicious? How can we evaluate these guys from minus infinity to plus infinity? Well, the normalization condition at the beginning tells us that as, so as x goes to plus or minus infinity, we know that uh, psi and psi star, both the, the wave function and its complex conjugate, they're going to go to 0. So it either has to go to 0 on a finite interval, or it has to asymptotically approach 0 uh, on the infinite domain. So that is a property of a normalized wave function. So if it's normalized in the beginning, we know that this is true. And what does that mean? 
that means that these guys are going to be zero because this is going to be zero, this is going to be zero, and also those partial derivatives with respect to x, they're going to be zero because it's going to asymptotically approach the x-axis. It's going to kiss the x-axis, and it's effectively going to be zero at the infinite uh, level. So this guy has to be equal to zero. So what do we know? We know that the time derivative of the area under the curve is zero. And if the time derivative of something is zero, then that something has to be a constant. And it has to be a constant. How do we know what constant it is? Well, we set it equal to 1 at t equals 0. So this guy has to equal 1 for all time. So for any time, this guy has to equal to 1. And that is the main message of this video. Normalization is preserved. You can watch the rest of the videos in this playlist if you click over here.